the fabulous farm babe, Pam Yankee from the Midwest Farm Report. Uh is with us today live in the studio. Peapod is here. Months, <laughs> yeah. years. Oh my God, it feels like it. Well, well we talked to you on the, on the news show. Well, you know? yeah, but it's not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> if you have a, call, a question for Pam, it's a great day to call in. The phones are wide open, 608-270-9933. So planting's underway. Yeah, yeah, in fact, uh, I would venture to guess a lot of the Channel 3 viewing area is pre getting pretty close to done, and we're into alfalfa. Uh, you know, we were talking about this cooler weather that's coming up, and it is going to be an issue. Uh, we did a story at Midwest Farm Report with Philippe Cacard up at Wallersheim. Mm -hmm. yeah. He lost 80% of his red grapes in that cool snap that we picked up back in April. Oh. So it's not going to impact uh, the availability of Wallersheim wines this year, but he said next year the reds, the estate wines, are not going to be available. Wow. So this weather is something that people have to get a hold of. We're also starting to watch uh, things like apple blossom development and strawberries and all that rest of that stuff. So I'm going to be very curious to hear about that, uh, the overnight lows. How, That's how it. low is dangerous? Well, you don't, you know, I, yeah, I, I, I need my apple freezing. people. To, yeah, right. It, so, and there's obviously some mechanisms that we can put in place to try to control some of that. But still, overall, I'd say that we don't want to get much below about 38 or we're going to have some damage. Um, we're we're um, going to be in big trouble, too, if we don't get some rain Well, soon, right? you know, <laughs> I can hear my farmers say, hang on, I'm not done yet. Not as done soon as that last bag oh, is okay. in the ground, <laughs> then go ahead and bring us rain. And guys got a lot of hay down, and they don't want that to get rained on either. So I understand that there's already some concerns about what's happening with uh, rainfall patterns, but let's tap the brakes just a little bit. I, I heard the, the conversation about drought. Right now, Wisconsin's in pretty good yeah, shape. Yeah, we're not in a drought right else. now. Oh, well, that's no. good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what's going on with milk prices. They've been oh, going up and down, and the there's so much milk out there. Well, there is. That's just the problem. And, you know, I've been reporting that Wisconsin has been flat as far as milk production basically for the last year. We've got about 5,000 fewer cows out there than we had a year ago. I got a question, an uh, email from uh, a Channel 3 viewer that said, you know, what are they doing to these existing cows? Are they feeding them something? Are, you know, are they giving them supplements? Quite honestly, it's the genetics that we have in our dairy cattle now. It's also the outstanding care that our dairy farmers give to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, quite on, the, the air conditioning will be getting kicked in next week so that they're comfortable. The sprinkler systems get turned on. Uh, they receive around-the-clock care. And so all of that is paying dividends by fewer cows, as much or a little bit more milk. We're really seeing big areas of milk production like down in Texas. And unfortunately in Texas, there's a lot of places where they're dumping milk. It's not making national news, but there's not a place for that milk to go and it's too expensive for us to bring it uh, into other areas. And we don't need it in Wisconsin, that's for sure. So, it, and, and for the forecast, we're gonna have to ride this out until probably at least fourth quarter. Really? I, you know, I, do I ever come in here <laughs> bouncing and happy joy joy? Well, this is the greatest it, thing in the... It, it, you do when we don't I talk do. about milk, but when milk comes up. I try up. to find those positive subjects uh, yeah. instead of the death on fire. But like I said, a lot of this is all still in development as far as those specialty crops are concerned. So we'll just have to wait and see what transpires. Let's uh, go to Bill in Oxford. Hi, Bill. What's on your mind? I was wondering if the Michigan cherry cup crop has been affected by the weather this year. You know, I have not. Uh, so far, my Door County people have uh, mitigated any of the kind of erratic weather because of Lake Michigan. So my assumption is going to be that Michigan has probably done the same thing on the other side. Uh, I've got a, one of my former assistants is in Michigan, and we were just texting yesterday, and he hasn't brought anything up. So I'm hoping that they're not only their cherry trees, but uh, they've got a lot of other specialty crops in Michigan that they're trying to manage. I'm hoping that the lake effect has prepared yeah. and, and protected them. They're doing tart cherries as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've got a couple different varieties of cherries. They really do a lot of different uh, fruits and vegetables in Michigan. That's the only place where I've ever seen a commercial asparagus picker. It was the craziest looking thing. A machine? <laughs> a machine. It was the craziest looking thing, see? I'm all, <laughs> you travel with the farm, baby, you're gonna learn all yes, kinds of crazy yes. stuff. <laughs> okay, we, we don't have any calls right now, so we'll just move along. Um, I guess we can wrap it up. We just told you that we're out of time, so that's perfect. Thank that's you, perfect. mighty thank voice from the stall. <laughs> the stall. <laughs> the stall. <laughs> all right, Good to Pam, see you, thanks Pam. for coming we'll up. Do it My again pleasure, soon. guys, we'll get together. All right.